Please be seated. The court is now back in session. Today, the chamber continues to hear testimony of witness Kang Kei release Dutch. Ms. Sakabuti, please report the attendance of the parties and other individuals to today's proceedings. Grafshi, Mr. President, for today's proceedings, all parties to this case are present. And based on the National Litical Lawyer for Civil Parties, informs the Grafshi that he will be a little bit late this morning. Mr. Nguyen Chi is present and in the holding cell downstairs. He has waived his rights to be present in the courtroom. The waiver has been delivered to the Grafshi. The witness who is to continue his testimony today, that is Mr. Ganga Iwalis Luch, is present in the courtroom. We have a reserve civil party today, that is through TCCP 236. President, thank you, Ms. Sakobuti. The Chamber now decides on the request by Nunjia. The Chamber has received a waiver from Nunjia, dated 23rd June 2016, which states that due to his health, that is, headache, back pain, he cannot sit or concentrate, concentrate for long, and in order to effectively participate in future hearings, he requests to waive his rights to be present at the 23rd June 2016 hearing. Having seen the medical report of Nguyen Chi by the duty doctor for the accused at the ECCC, dated 23rd June 2016, which notes that Nguyen Chi has a chronic back pain and it becomes severe when he sits for long and recommends that the chamber shall grant him his request so that he can follow the proceedings remotely from the holding cell downstairs. Based on the above information and pursuant to Rule 81.5 of the ECCC internal rules, the Chamber grants Nuchi his request to follow today's proceedings remotely from the holding cell downstairs Why and audio visual means. The Chamber instructs the AV unit personnel to link the proceedings to the room downstairs so that Nuchi can follow. That applies for the whole day. The chamber now hands the floor to the defense team for Q and Pawn to continue putting further questions to the witness. Merci. Thank you. International Deputy Co Prosecutor, you may have the floor. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Before we uh, proceed, just the, the witness yesterday raised some questions about the military court interview. Um, just two things I want to put on the record. One, uh, I believe the interview he was shown yesterday was described as a 1999 interview. Um, this is E3 slash 530. Uh, in fact, the date, the actual date of that interview is 4 July 2002. Um, so. Uh, about three years at, into um, the witness's detention at the military uh, tribunal. Um, second, um, the witness had uh, asked uh, to see his prior uh, military statements. Um, we took a look uh, to compare the form of the interview that was shown to him yesterday uh, to his other military court interviews. Uh, there is one uh, noticeable difference I want to bring to the court's attention. Uh, in the interview he was shown yesterday, uh, all you will see is uh, a thumbprint. Uh, but in virtually every other interview of him from the military tribunal, uh, in addition to his thumbprint, um, his name is handwritten underneath the thumbprint. I don't know whether uh, that is of any significance. Uh, only the witness can tell us that. 
uh, but there is a noticeable difference between the interview that was shown yesterday uh, and his other um, interviews in which you will always see uh, the witness's uh, name underneath his thumbprint. Monsieur le Président. Mr. President, I appreciate that. Uh, if uh, the prosecutor, prosecutor would allow me to speak first, because I had told the Chamber that I heard yesterday in giving the date of the first WRI. As regards the commentaries on the record of interview, uh, which has to do with uh, the arguments, the prosecutor hadn't made such a statement, such an objection. I hadn't completed my examination of the witness on his statements. I would like the court to reflect the fact that I object to the manner in which the co-prosecutor is trying to give the witness uh, an exit door, and uh, trying to contradict what I said. In any case, before returning to that point, I would like to finish off a matter I started yesterday regarding the follow-up to the meeting of January 1979, which was referred to yesterday with the witness. Mr. Witness, good morning. Before we talk about the statements you gave to the military court, I would like us to look at a statement you gave the co-investigating judges of this court, that is the ECCC, on the 23rd of August 2007. With your leave, Mr. President, I would like to give a hard copy of this statement to the witness. And may I also request that it should be placed on the screen. Document E3 slash 452 in Khmer 00146558. ERN in French 00147933. ERN in English 00147571. Yes, you may proceed. Et si l'on peut afficher le paragraphe qui m'intéresse. May I also request that the paragraph of interest to me be placed on the screen. Yesterday, when I put the question to you again, whether you had issued any instructions following the meeting dated the 6th of January 1979 you referred to and the meeting you had with Mr. Kiersampan, you stated that you did not issue any instructions or specific information uh, except to Hall. Uh, I remember that is what you stated yesterday in that statement, E3 slash 452. This is what you stated. First of all, I said already, I thought that Comrade Lane would not dare do anything careless. Second, all those cadres called in to meet took those instructions to disseminate at their locations. Thirdly, these instructions were not related to work at S-21. They were related to the military situation. Finally, another reason was that Pol Pot had broadcast by radio that the Yuan might enter deeply into the country, but the situation might be reversed. And he asked all comrades near and far to continue supporting democratic Kampuchea. Those are the reasons why I was satisfied to disseminate those orders." End of quote. So my question remains the same as I posed yesterday. Did you issue any instructions? Did you disseminate any instructions, yes or no? And if you did, what instructions were they?
yesterday I said that the situation was ordinary and I convey the message to her to uh, manage the staff in uh, the uh, unit and that's the uh, normal practice that I communicated with her regarding ordinary situation and even when all prisoners has to be smashed I instructed her in the same manner and uh, the situation was not uh, the same thing as the current uh, practice in the military or in the army so usually the chief uh, that is me converts the message to Ho and Ho would uh, manage that with the staff and that is based on the principle of to lead uh, collectively and to be responsible individually And at uh, S21, we always uh, trusted the instructions from the party. Of course, we had uh, gunfires uh, with the Yun side, but nobody seems to uh, panic. And only at 11 o'clock, when a tank was rolling on the street in front of my house, I instructed them to stop having meal. So again, actually, I disseminated information or instruction from the party to all my staff through my normal practice. My question was more specific. My question was, more specific. My question was what orders did you disseminate after the meeting of the 6th of January 1979 you referred to? What particular instructions did you issue? I have repeated uh, the same response, and probably this is the third or the fourth time that I uh, disseminated the content of the instructions uh, from uh, the party to staffers at S21 through Ho. And Ho would relay uh, the information to all staff. And the uh, content remains the same, so that the June had entered deeply in, inside, but Rune and Sai were counter uh, their countering their advancement and the Defense Council reminded me of a speech broadcast on the radio by the speech of Pol Pot broadcast by a radio but I mentioned about the instructions of Brother Paul conveyed through Brother Haim and that June despite their advancement they would not reach Phnom Penh and that was the information I re received and that was the information that I disseminated to the staffer in my unit through our normal practice that is through whole and the same information or dissemination was uh, a norm in all other units est-ce que vous savez si Hall and do you know whether Hall disseminated the message did he report back to you that he had disseminated the information to the rest of the S21 staff we were through a chain of command that is from the regiment down to the battalion and that is the way, and the battalion chief would relay the information to all those uh, under the uh, battalion chief's uh, management. We did not call everybody to a meeting and disseminate the information. No, that's not the way. And that's why it, on the 7th of January 79, nobody panicked. 
and only in my capacity as chief of S21, I raised my hand and I issued order to everyone and who was standing beside me that everybody stopped eating and uh, go to their respective uh, places, prepare their belonging and awaited my further order. And I went to look around at the uh, Masetung Boulevard. So there's a uh, process of uh, channeling the dissemination of information within my uh, unit. Witness, you have spoken at length on what happened on the 7th of January, but my question was different. My question was that you spoke about the meeting of the 6th of January, and you said you asked all to disseminate the information. My question to you was whether Hall on the 6th of January disseminated that information. Did he tell you that he had disseminated that information? That is my question. In practice, when I gave him instruction, he would implement my instruction. And there was a, uh, not the practice that he did not implement my instruction. And usually after the implementation, the person would come to uh, make a report to me. Do I understand from your answer that he reported back to you the fact that he has disseminated information? Your understanding of the, the event is uh, your personal understanding, but what happened at S21 is that every instruction that are issued would be implemented, and in some cases, they would uh, come to report to me about the implementation, but not, that's not always uh, the case. And that is why I would like you to answer my question. In this specific case, and not in the other cases, in this specific case regarding the meeting of the 6th of January 1979, did he tell you that he did pass on the information? Mr. President, I have uh, explained uh, repeatedly the dissemination of information through a chain of command. And as I said, every of my instructions has to be implemented. And the evidence uh, showed that nobody panicked uh, when the tank was uh, rolling in on the street. And I believe that is evidence enough for, for you, uh, Council. I am not sure that I have had an answer to my question. I do understand that you're saying, yes, Ho told you that he passed on the information. Are you saying, yes, he did disseminate the information? The answer should be yes or no, so that I should be able to understand your testimony. I have stated uh, clearly that they had to implement my instructions, and I even uh, showed you the evidence of the implementation. And I believe that it is uh, clear enough as someone who has a brain to think. Je voulais avoir. I would like to say that the length of your answers is precisely what makes me somewhat perplexed. I understand you are saying yes to my question, and in that case, I would like you to 
comment on the passage of uh, uh, Susti's uh, testimony at the hearing of the 28th of July 2009, document E3 slash 7466. So it is in your trial. And the time was shortly before 11 hours 07 and 1 second. And this is what Susti stated as regards the arrival of Vietnamese troops in Phnom Penh in 1979, well, we were not informed in advance. We did not know where the Vietnamese troops were in their attack. We were in total darkness, in ignorance, and that was the situation. Uh, and no attempt was made to destroy the documents. What is of interest to me is the part in which witness Susti says we were not informed in advance. We do not know how far the Vietnamese troops had gone in the attack. I put the question to you again. Do you stand by your statement that Ho passed on your orders and the information you had received on the 6th of January 1979? Regarding the statement of uh, Comrade T, it is uh, uh, correct in the sense that nobody told him uh, to destroy the documents. Nobody told him how far or how deep the, the Jewel uh, had entered because the uh, party instruction was to uh, stay ground and to continue working. So this is a true uh, separate things. One was to keep uh, working and not about uh, destroying uh, documents or destroying uh, the prison. And if I knew about that, then I would uh, destroy the prison. And that is the fact. And uh, Suti's statement is uh, correct. The instruction uh, through Hall to disseminate the uh, party's instruction to, uh, is also correct because these are two separate matters. Because they were not aware of the advancement of the June, and I told them to stay ground and to continue working because I did not uh, tell them how far the uh, June had entered. I'd like us to look at the document we started referring to yesterday on your statement E3 slash 530, dated 4th of July 2002, and it is not dated in 1999, as I stated erroneously yesterday. Do you have that document for your witness? That is the document that was given to you yesterday. I'd like to uh, speak about the discrepancy between the document in my hands and the document that was referred to by the International Deputy Co-Prosecutor. If, if indeed uh, there are discrepancies, it means that they are through uh, separate uh, documents, and I do not want to delve into the content of these uh, documents. However, I'd like to uh, speak about uh, the event when I first brought to the military tribunal, I was uh, charged uh, with uh, a criminal offense, although I do not recall the exact uh, charge. I was then uh, questioned in 1999, and uh, by around 2002, an additional charge uh, was uh, 
provided to me because they had to continue to uh, detain me for that reason. So they uh, charged me with another criminal offense since I had been detained for three years. For that reason, that was the uh, second set of uh, records of uh, interviews. The military judge of An was the one who questioned me and uh, knew somebody was the graffiti. So uh, the documents that were shown to me by the defense counsel yesterday was a single page document that is at uh, 00095991. And the uh, complete document started with uh, 0009 5680. President interrupt. Uh, Defense counsel, uh, please uh, allow the witness to finish uh, his response regarding this matter first. Monsieur le Président, je veux. Mr. President. I believe I have uh, given you enough time to, uh, on this uh, subject. So in order to clear the matter once and for all, the, you should allow the witness uh, to complete his response. And the uh, judge, you may continue. Witness, allow me to uh, comment. This is a full uh, set of document. And uh, this was given to me based on my request. It started from uh, 009. Five, six, or five, nine, so it's the witness, or eight, eight, and it ending with EN 91. And if you read the document in its uh, completeness, the uh, content was about the screening process. where it was late by 870. That's why there were um, mentions of Pol Pot, of Brother Noon, Sun Sein. As for Pum and Mok, it was a separate matter since they were at a uh, zone level. That's why I was asked whether I was involved in the screening process, whether there were any uh, Instructions from Ian Sari and Kiyo Sampon. Indeed, Ian Sari, Kiyo Sampon, or Won Wait, uh, I never uh, met them, met them. But I was asked by the uh, investigating judge about Ian Sari and Kiyo Sampon. And starting from 75 through 79, I only met Brother time for that few minutes only. And when I left, I came uh, across uh, Ian Sari when he was traveling in his uh, vehicle towards uh, the east. And I was on my motorcycle heading off the Buddhist school to the vice direction. And he was uh, staring at me. And uh, my obligation at the time was to finish off the uh, four individuals from Y8. So I did not uh, see any of them during the screening process, including the two, including Won, Pum. And I only had contact with a uh, brother Noon and Son Sen. And throughout my life, during the Red Team, I only met brother Ham for a few minutes. And that was not in that did not involve the screening process of the enemy, but it was about the advancement of the June uh, troop. And this uh, document, if read in full, would uh, reflect uh, the points that I just mentioned. However, if you if you only pick a line or two, that would be different, uh, a, a different matter. And if you only pick one or two that I uh, saw them or that I made them, that is not a, a, a proper context.
Mr. President, uh, with your leave, uh, can we display the Khmer Yaren page 00095691 of this document? Uh, and this is what I wanted to request earlier when I asked uh, the witness uh, to wait a little bit because uh, I wanted uh, the page to be displayed because the ERN that was given in French was not the right one. So uh, with your leave, Mr. President, can we display this page on the screen? President, I had the document was uh, shown yesterday, and now, yes, you may proceed once again, but this should not be repeated. Witness, if I understood your testimony uh, well, and please correct me if I'm wrong, you were speaking about something else when you were speaking about Kyosampan and Yeng Sari. My question is, during this 2002 interview, did you tell the investigating judges at one point in time anything about this meeting of uh, 6 January 1979 and your meeting with uh, Yeng Sari in a vehicle on that very same day. Did you speak about that when you were questioned uh, by the investigating judges? Council wants to know about this matter, you have to bring the whole file of the military court. Then we can know. This is the matter concerning the, the screening process and about the instructions at S21. So please bring the whole document, the whole case file. That's not going to be possible to bring the whole file of uh, the military tribunal case file. My question was simple, however. That day when you were interrogated, or qu when you were questioned by the investigating judge, did you speak about this meeting of 6 January 1979 and your meeting uh, with uh, Yeng Sari on that same day? Thank you, Mr. President. I would like to respond uh, as follows. The investigating judge questioned me about the screening process and also the result after the screening process. And I was asked about the fact that I was under which superior at the time. So this document reflects the screening process that I discussed back then. The investigating judge did not question me about the meeting, and if the question not, was not put to me for that regard, in that regard, so why I bothered answering the question about uh, the meeting? and. I can only provide the answer as long as I am given with the whole file of a military court's case file. So it's not fair to question me on this particular issue without the whole file. So when you wrote on the page that we saw on the screen with Pol Pot, it was the same thing. I just saw him 10 meters away. And regarding Kyosan Panyang Sari, I never saw him. This was simply connected to um, possible hierarchical reports, uh, hierarchical relations that you had with people. Is that what you mean? Uh, 
uh, Mr. President, the con conclusion by the Council is correct. The, that was the only one topic that I was questioned by the investigating judge back then. The question was about screening process. And I told the investigating judge that I survived uh, the regime because one, I did not uh, go out to arrest and I did not, uh, in, I was not involved in the moral offenses and also I uh, did not uh, take the possession of uh, war loots, war boots. War booty, correction, uh, interpreter. Uh, President, you may proceed now, uh, co-prosecutor. Um, thank you, Mr. President. This, this may have just been a translation issue, but in the translation of counsel's question into English, she asserted that it was the a witness who wrote the interview. Okay, it was translated that way into English, and I, and it, and I, uh, I don't think we, we know who wrote this, but, but I'm not sure that it's correct that the witness wrote the statement himself. Indeed. The co-prosecutor shouldn't be concerned. I'm aware of the fact that uh, it is not the charged person, of course, uh, who writes his own statements by hand before uh, an investigating judge. Now I'd like to move on to another topic witness, uh, Pong. Uh, picking up from what we were discussing yesterday, you told us that when Pong was at S21, you never spoke to him. Did I understand your testimony properly? Mr. President, Mr. President, please direct counsel to put a clearer question about the meeting that I had with Pong. So what specific uh, matter that I did not discuss with Pong? And also ask the interpreters to interpret it correctly. President, counsel, please uh, put a clearer question and specific one for the witness that might lead to confusion the question should not be uh, put, you know, in patch one, but should be full. Uh, there must have been a problem in the interpretation because my question was very clear in French. Let me repeat it. Witness, when Pong was um, arrested at S21, you never, you did not see him and you did not put any questions to him, and you did not speak to him. Is that correct? Concerning Pang's arrest, the date of his arrest was clear. He was a prisoner after the arrest. He was in the capacity of a leaders, so I did not go to see him and to pay homage to him or to make any report. With your leave, Mr. President, I would like to provide uh, a Khmer document uh, to the witness. This is document E3 slash um, Three, four, seven. Maybe before we display it, uh, I will provide the ERNs right now. One point of clarification, however, you said yesterday that Pong uh, was interrogated by Pon, and that he uh, was subjected to the hot method. During his interrogation, Was there any attempt to, to use the cold in, 
cold method to, uh, for, for him to give information that he might not have provided uh, during his interrogation with Pon. Thank you. I have no idea uh, when the, he was interrogated, particularly in relation to cold or hot methods used by the interrogator, or inter uh, interrogator at the time. And sometimes the chewing methods uh, was also used uh, after the two methods. Now, I would like uh, the document to be provided to the witness with your leave, Mr. President. That's document E3-347. These are the audio uh, transcripts of uh, the interviews carried out in 1999, in May as well as in July 1999. Unfortunately, we do not have a French copy so let me provide the Khmer Yaren, uh, the first page, first uh, 00002494, and then a second page, 00002496. And in English, it is 00002500. Zero 06 for the first page. And with regard to the segment I'd like to focus on, it's the following page, 00002507. With your leave, Mr. President, can we provide this document to the witness? And can we first of all display the first page on the screen? Yes, please. Since there is no French version, um, I'm going to read out the title of this document in English. Duik tapes compiled in English by Steve Eder as of July 3, 1999. Um, je précise. I'd like to make it clear that when I'm speaking about the interviews of the witness in um, July 1999, I believe that we are indeed speaking about the compilation dating to, um, back to July 1999. Now I'd like to focus on uh, the uh, segment I am interested in. So that, that is at ERN in English, 00002507. And this Mr. President, with your leave, may we display it in Khmer on the screen? And let me repeat the ERN, 00002496. This is um, what is written in English. And I quote, Que s'en he was a full rights member of the CPK Center. His administrative role was at the Chief of State, and also, administratively, he was chairman of the office of the Center. And according to what was responded by, no said by Chum Sam Oak alias Pang, who told me this after he had fully completed his responses already, and I was chatting informally, and reminiscing with him, maybe 10 days after, that in some necessary cases, Kyo Sampan was summoned to participate in, meeting, in meetings about Tarets. Are these confessions, says Judge Lavergne, are these S21 confessions? Vous lisez des... Are you reading... Answer. I'm reading the transcript. Your Honor, 
of uh, what appears. Judge Lavan, but this is information taken from S-21 confessions? Answer. That's the question that I was putting because, indeed, I believe that is the case, but I'd like to remind you that when I objected with regard to this issue, when the co-prosecutor used uh, a similar excerpt, you told me that you're not sure that these are confessions, and therefore I'm asking you to question uh, the witness in that regard. So, witness, uh, uh, the witness is telling me that uh, he um, did not interrogate Pong, Pong uh, during his arrest. Today, I am confronting him uh, with the document. I'm not, I don't want to speak about the document's content, but simply about this sentence. You had fully completed his responses already. Après. After he had completed his response, because in the English document, uh, there is only one part of this excerpt. We don't have the full translation, and in English it's very, very clear that this indeed is the result of a discussion with Pong once he had uh, finished confessing. That is a question I wanted to put to the witness. I simply want to know, and I don't want to start dealing with the content of the confession. I simply want to know because uh, this is what I was told uh, when I uh, objected uh, to the co-prosecutor uh, when he was focusing on the same passage. I was told that I, uh, that I should, in my cross-examination, bring up this issue and see, indeed, uh, if uh, this happened during a confession. But I see that uh, Your Honor is maybe displeased, but we can find uh, the, the, this in the record. This is exactly what you told me when the issue came up with the co-prosecutor uh, when he confronted the witness with, uh, with it uh, while he was examining him. So my question is very simple. Do you stand by uh, the fact that you did not speak to Pong while he was at S21? Mr. President, I was brought from some Lord Madame Wong on the, the 3rd of May 1999. And I was in the hands of the military court on 18 June 1999. So Steve Heda did not uh, go to interview me uh, at the time. So this is not the document, the interview that I gave to Steve Heather. Alors. Well, maybe to let you know, Mr. Witness, Steve Heather does not appear on this document as the person who interviewed you, but as the person who retranscribed uh, the audio uh, recordings of uh, this interview with uh, Mr. Peshu. Do you have any uh, other comments to make uh, following uh, this information? I do not really understand about the document before me. This is the retranscription of the interview that I had with uh, Pesu. Why don't you bring the original uh, document of the interview that I had with Pesu? Could you explain me on this particular mat matter? The original document uh, I can give to you. We're dealing here with document E3 slash 347. But these are this is a document that is based on the same uh, audio retranscription. In any case, must I understand from your answer that uh, you challenge uh, what was retranscribed from the uh, audio recording as appears uh, in this document? 
the that uh, corresponds uh, to uh, the audio recording of uh, the interview with Christophe Pichou, as the co-prosecutor reminded you. Are you challenging this uh, witness? Mr. President, I do not challenge it. I was in interviewed by Christophe Pichou at the time Christophe Pesu went to see me in his capacity as the deputy chief of OACHR in Cambodia, and Thomas Hammerberg was the chief of back then. The interview, yes, I gave it to him, and the original interview was that was the one that I gave to Christophe Pesu. But why you bring uh, the transcription made by Stephen Hader and put it before me? I do not challenge this document. And I, I do not want to say anything about the objection or the challenge before the co-investigating judges here at the ECC. Why, uh, don't you, why didn't you tell me at the beginning that uh, this document was the retranscription of, the, of uh, Steve Heder, and why don't you bring uh, the original document by Christophe Pesu? Well, Mr. President, uh, I'm going to give to the witness, therefore, document E3-347-0016089, that's the English ERN, or, or the ERN, correction interpreter. Um, I'm going to ask you, witness, to please uh, read out the excerpt in Khmer to avoid uh, interpretation problems, the passage that uh, is indicated in orange. It is your answer in the original document. Mr. President, first of all, I am now speaking about uh, the interview that I gave to Christophe Pesu. That interview was conducted in Hotel Monorum Hotel from 29 April up to Third May, and the date here is four to is between four to six. At back in the investigation stage, uh, Yu Bun Leng and Marcel Mong uh, asked me to read the document and inform judges that the points or parts of the document which I did not uh, agree with. I was confronted by the co-investigating judges back in the past already, and now uh, you can put a specific question in relation to the part of this document as you wish. Um. I asked you to read out the excerpt, but I won't bother you any further with this because apparently you don't wish to do so. I'm going to ask my colleague, therefore, Kung Samon, to read uh, the part of this uh, document in Khmer I would like to concentrate on. Hello, Kung Samon. Mr. President, I would like to read the excerpt. 
Thieu Song Phong was the full m member of the CPK in charge of administrative work. He was the state president, and based on the confession of Chum some or other spawn after he wrote the confession, I had a chit chat with him. In some necessary cases, Kyu Sum Pon was invited to that meeting as well. So witness, um, I am not focusing on the content of a confession, I'm focusing on this question, whether it be in Christophe Peshu's version or in the retranscription by Steve Heder, in both cases, it appears that you are saying, or in fact, in fact it appears that, uh, it does not appear, it's clearly indicated here, in fact, that you spoke to Pong when he was at S21 after his arrest. Uh, so, is this information correct, yes or no? And can you tell us why you said that you had not spoken to Pong when he was detained at S21? Thank you, Council. Mr. President, this, this point was objected or challenged by me back in the past. My lawyer, defense lawyer, Prong Sporu, at the time, made mention about the fact that no witness uh, was present together with his accused. I informed the judges at the time about the event before the arrest of Pong. And Toi Phuen, the Minister of Public Works, uh, was made mentioned by me after the interrogation, after his interrogation. I asked uh, my staffer to prepare a seat uh, for me so that I can I could chit chat with him. He was from Kampong Thomas well and his house was at Aja Leap. After the interrogation, I had the conversation, the casual conversation with him, not with other individuals. I asked him about personality of Haim and he told me that Haim was a close associate of Pol Pot. So Haim would do whatever was uh, instructed by Pol Pot. And then I asked about Brother Sun Sen. He replied, in fact, initially, uh, Sun Sen uh, was uh, part of the Khmer Ray and in the reactionary group. Uh, I apologize, I apologize. Um, I want to be sure that I understood you well. You're telling me that you're speaking about a discussion you had at S21 with um, Pong after his detention? Or rather, during his detention? So it's with Poon, not with Pong. Ça m'intéresse pas. Excusez-moi, mais I'm sorry, but um, in the statements of people who were the statements of people who were tortured and detained at S21 are not admissible here. So my question is: Do you challenge the fact that? the retranscriptions of uh, your audio statements uh, with Christophe Pichou, whether it be in, in the direct, in the original document or in Steve Heder's retranscription, are you challenging the veracity of these documents? 
I'm not asking you about uh, conversations you had with other people. I'm asking you questions about this interview that was retranscribed. Are you challenging the veracity of this interview? Deputy Co-Prosecutor, you have the floor. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. I just want to observe this is the same question that was just asked. The witness has was answering it, had given an answer, and then was cut off by counsel. So I'm, I'm not sure why she is asking the same question again after having cut off the witness who was trying to explain um, uh, what had happened during the uh, judicial investigation. Là, uh, Monsieur le témoin est en train. Here, the witness was talking of his uh, conversation with Pung. He was not talking of his uh, uh, trial. My question is with regard to the conversation he had with Christophe Pichot before the trial and the retranscription of his statement by Steve Heder. My question for is on that. My question is, do you challenge the authenticity of the transcription of the audio uh, version of your statement? Do you challenge the veracity of these uh, audio retranscriptions? Your answer should be yes or no. You can say, yes, I challenge the authenticity of this audio retranscription. Counsel, as you're asking about the entire content of this uh, document, or you're asking only about the uh, particular excerpt that was read out that is in relation to Kiel some porn, that there was a casual uh, conversation, and that happened uh, 10 days after receiving the confession of uh, Chum Sum Ao. It is a repetitive uh, issue. Of course, I understand about uh, your methodology of uh, cross-examination, but uh, it seems that the witness has responded to your question, and your question is also uh, not clear, as uh, it uh, could be interpreted as it either refers to the entire content or to a particular uh, excerpt of the content. And the witness has responded to that effect that he, the point was raised when he was questioned by the co-investigating judges. Oui, mais dans le cadre de mon interrogatoire, Yes, but in my examination of this witness, I didn't have that uh, answer. My question is whether you challenge the veracity of this passage I have quoted. If the chamber is satisfied with your answer, I didn't uh, understand your testimony. Maybe I have uh, limitations in my understanding, but I didn't understand your answer with regard to the passage I read out to your witness. Your question seems to mainly focus on the overall content of this document, and later on you uh, refresh it to focus on the passage. So that's why I instructed you to ask the question rather precisely whether the witness challenged the entire content of uh, this document or whether he challenged only the passage related to kill some porn that is in relation to the uh, confessions of Chum Sum Auk, and the passage was read out by Kung Sum On. And in fact, the witness responded to the uh, two parts of the questions already. And I believe you should refer to uh, your transcript that is uh, your question. And on the Khmer uh, channel, your question focused on the entire content of the document, and later on, you change it to the passage 
that is related to kill some pawn only. That is after he spoke uh, to Chum Sam Ao after he received the confession, and I believe uh, more time has been spent on this particular fact already. Je vais préciser. I will once more make my question very specific. The passage of interest to me is the passage in which it is stated in the tra retranscription by the witness that he spoke with P Pang about Kyo Sampan when he was detained at uh, S21 after his confessions. My question is as follows. This passage drawn from your audio retranscription, is that something you challenge or not? Do you challenge the veracity of that passage or not? I will now respond yes or no to that passage because uh, you refer to matters uh, concerns to people that is uh, uh, Pong, and I had spoken to him before he was detained at S21, and I never spoke about uh, Brother Ham while he was in uh, France. I spoke about Brother Ham when there was a meeting uh, in order to decide whether uh, C uh, had to be arrested or not. So I will not uh, know with the issue whether I challenge that passage or not. As with the uh, brother Tô Pun, after he was uh, beaten, and here you have to be clear, Tô Pun, alias Pun, not the Chum Sam Ao, alias Pong, President interrupts uh, witness. You had uh, responded already, but it is uh, unclear. You said that uh, when you were before the co-investigating uh, judges, and uh, through your uh, counsels that uh, you were not assisted by a witness or by uh, anyone, and that uh, you uh, challenge the relevant uh, passage. And uh, from what you said, the overall content of that interview is, uh, is correct. That is the initial interview that uh, you made with Christopher Pesu. from UNHCHR, but uh, the uh, question is that whether you challenge the passage uh, quoted by the defense counsel or not. Did you also challenge that passage when you were before the co-investigating judges? Do you understand uh, what I try to get through? So please focus only on the uh, passage that was uh, read out to you, that is to chit-chat it with uh, Pong after he provided his uh, confession. And the focus is on the information that uh, you had with Pong through that casual conversation. And whether you challenge that passage. Witness. Mr. President, allow me to clarify for one more time that from the day of a Pong arrest, I never spoke to him about anything. And the content of this passage that I spoke with Pong, I really challenge it. Mr. President, compte tenu de Mr. President, given the length of uh, our deliberations this morning, I thought I would have completed my examination uh, by this time, but uh, I crave the court's indulgence. I will have to need, um, request you to give me more time after the break to continue and wrap up my examination of the witness. 
Thank you, Council. It is now convenient for a short break. We'll take a break now and resume at 10.30. Court officer, please assist the witness at the waiting room reserves for witnesses and civil parties and invite him back into the courtroom at 10.30. The court is now in recess.